Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Sultai New Perspectives combo deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. The deck is a cycling combo deck featuring a ton of cards from throughout Magic Arena's history. We've got cycling cards from the Anthology expansions as well as from Ikoria and Amonkhet Remastered. And the centerpiece of the deck is the namesake card New Perspectives, a 6 man enchantment that when it enters the battlefield lets us draw 3 cards and as long as we have 7 or more cards in hand we can pay 0 mana rather than pay cycling costs so the goal of the deck is to win the game on the very same turn where we cast New Perspectives, and that's thanks to most of the cards in the deck having cycling. So as soon as we play New Perspectives, hopefully after drawing three, we have seven or more cards in hand, so we can start cycling for free, draw through our entire deck. Of course, at some point, we're going to run into a bunch of cards that don't cycle, additional copies of New Perspectives, maybe some ramp cards like Haven or some basic lands, and then we'll be stuck. But that's where Vizier of Tumbling Sands and Shafet Monitor come in handy. Vizier, when we cycle it, it lets us untap target permanent, which means we can untap a land to make more mana, especially if we untap a land enchanted by Wolfolo Haven, we can make additional mana since Haven adds green mana whenever we tap the enchanted land, and we also have Shifan Monitor that when it gets cycled also lets us search for a basic land to put on the battlefield untapped, so also essentially ramps us when we're cycling, and uh, thanks to the extra mana from Monitor and Vizier, we can maybe cast a copy of Shadow of the Grave, which returns to our hand all cards in our graveyard that we cycled or discarded this turn. So this will get back any copies of Vizier, Shafet Monitor, and of course all the other cycling cards, which makes it very unlikely for us to fizzle once we cast our new perspectives. And then what's our win condition? Eventually we're going to cast a Thassa's Oracle with an empty or almost empty library to win the game. So it does take a while to go through the combo just because we have to cycle so many cards, but most of the time when we cast our new perspectives we will win on the very same turn. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At 2 mana we've got the full playset of Wolfillow Haven, which enchants one of our lands, and then produces additional green mana whenever it becomes tapped. So this can help us ramp, especially nice with our Vizier of Tumbling Sands. So we do want to make sure to enchant ideally a blue-black source, so we make all three colors when we tap the land for mana. That way we have the blue mana to eventually win with Thassa's Oracle if we untap it with Vizier, as well as maybe the black mana to cast our Shadow of the Grave, which is our next card. Of course this is at its best when we're in the middle of a combo, so we can get back a whole bunch of cycling cards, but every now and then, let's say we don't have a new perspectives, we can still maybe cycle a bunch of cards for one mana and then cast a value Shadow of the Grave just to get some cards back. Then one copy of Thassa's Oracle, if the opponent has an early thought seize or they're playing a lot of counter spells, we might have to take a different approach and try one of our alternate win conditions like Shark Typhoon instead. And then we've got four copies of Sensor, giving us a bit of interaction by countering target spell unless its controller pays one mana, and can also cycle it for one blue. Now we don't want to cast too many interactive spells early on, because we do need to make sure we have at least seven cards in hand when we cast a new perspectives, so that's why you don't see a ton of interaction. Then we've got Vizier of Tumbling Sands, which is very important the turn we're comboing with new perspectives, but can also potentially be cast for three mana to untap one of our lands and maybe ramp into new perspectives a turn sooner. Then we've got Shark Typhoon, which can also act as an alternate win condition if we cast it for 6 mana, but for the most part will be cycled and can maybe generate a value shark token in the process. And then Crows and Tusker can also be cycled for 2 and a green, and lets us search for a basic land to put into our hand. So it doesn't ramp, but it does make sure we keep hitting our land drops all the way up to 6, and is a nice 2 for 1. And then Migration Path can also be cycled or cast to search up two basic lands, so great for ramping, as well as Shafet Monitor, which we can cycle for four mana, searches up a basic so it can help us ramp into New Perspectives a turn sooner, and then also important the turn we're comboing. And then besides our four copies of New Perspectives, also two copies of Boon of the Wishgiver from Ikoria lets us draw four cards and can also be cycled for one mana. And then going over the mana base, we've got plenty of cycling lands and basic lands. Basic lands important with our Crows and Tusker, Shafet Monitor and Migration Path, and we also want some lands that come into play untapped, and then plenty of cycling lands to combo with our new perspectives, including Zagoth Triome, which is also just a great mana fixer. We've got Fetid Pools, which cycles for two mana, and then Tranquil Thicket and Lonely Sandbar, which cycle for one mana. The reason we're playing these one mana cyclers over maybe Catria Triome, which would be a nice blue-green dual land that also cycles, is that having cheaper cyclers is a better combo with Shadow of the Grave if we're just casting a value Shadow of the Grave, cycling a bunch of cards. And then we've got four basic force, one basic swamp, and four basic islands. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw, and 
the sand's missing new perspectives, is it still keepable? Yeah, I guess it's okay. The mana's functional, we've got a bit of ramp. And can maybe cast a value, Shadow of the Grave. Facing a Knight of the Ebon Legion. So, blank green. And then we'll play Haven, I guess. Next turn I can cycle Crows and Tusker, play Triome. And the Spawn of Mayhem. That one's gonna apply a lot of pressure, but a new perspective's an excellent draw. So yeah, we're probably gonna combo off on turn 5. We've got plenty of important cards in hand, including Vizier and Shadow of the Grave. So it's unlikely that we're gonna fizzle. Spawn of Mayhem tramples, so can't really chump it effectively with a shark token. And then we'll get an islands. And then now I can cycle Shark Typhoon to block the knight so we don't die. And uh, yeah, go for the combo next turn. Hope there's no thought cease to take away Thassa's Oracle, that would be awkward. Although I guess taking perspectives would also be problematic. So I can't cycle double Shark Typhoon, but I can cycle one of them. And they don't have enough mana to Fatal Push and pump the knight at least. So, yeah, I guess we'll cycle for two. And an ambush kills my token. So we're at two. And now it's combo time. So, the sequencing when cycling mostly matters if we draw Shafet Monitor, which we want to cycle as soon as possible before all our basic lands are gone. Tusker can thin out a deck of basic lands, so we're less likely to draw them, although having some basics in a deck can be useful if we need them for Shafet Monitor, of course. So it's not always clear whether or not you want to cycle Tusker right away or not. For now we just cycle a bunch. Vizier can untap Feathered Pools, which casts our Shadow of the Grave. Cycle this for zero. I guess we can play Nother Haven to make a bit more mana. And then cycle Shafet Monitor. Alright, time for Shadow of the Grave. Get back all our cards. And then we should be nearing the kill here. Just gotta keep on cycling. Probably should have cycled the monitor a while ago. Last basic. Thirteen cards remain. I appreciate my opponent's patience here, as we're trying to combo as quickly as possible.
could cast another Shadow of the Grave, but it's probably not going to be necessary. Three. So, since our opponent stepped out, I guess we can just go for it. And there we go. So, yeah. Takes a while to go through the combo, but uh, most of the time casting new perspectives is game over. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Which land to play on turn one? Probably Feathered Pools. So opponent looks to be on the Neoform combo deck, which sadly is going to kill us faster than we kill them most of the time, and we don't have a whole lot of interaction. Although they didn't have both combo pieces in hand here, otherwise we already would have died. So there's hope. For now we're probably going to cycle Tusker, which we can do at instant speed, and grab another forest most likely, or maybe an island. I guess Island is fine. Alright, opponent's just gonna Neoform Paradise Druids and has a dual caster mage. Alright, so that's essentially the combo as well. Uh, so I guess I need to top deck Sensor by cycling Vizier and untapping Feathered Pools. And that's not a sensor, so yeah, we're just dead. Assuming they have all the remaining combo pieces in their library. So, do they have a rubble fort? Is the question here. And even if they don't, they probably just kill us over the course of two turns. Since we're not close to comboing next turn yet. There's a Rubble Fort and probably a Combat Celebrant here as the last card. Nope, just double Rubble Forts. I guess insurance in case I had a way to interact with one of them. Can't do much here. And that's still enough for lethal. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Facing Lures of the Dream Den. Hopefully it's a Spirit Dancer deck without a turn to Spirit Dancer. Arcanist can be tough because they have Thought Seize for Hand Disruption, which can take away new perspectives. Spirit Dancer we can outrace if they don't have turn to Spirit Dancer, which is typically going to kill us around turn 4, and we're more of a turn 5 combo deck. Turn 1 Savior. That's alright. So next turn I could just cast Vizier, since our opponent's not going to have much removal. Can just untap my Haven to ramp into Perspectives a bit sooner. Alright, they do have turn to Spirit Dancer, so there's a chance we can still combo before they can kill us here. Thanks to Vizier helping us ramp. So yeah, I mean... I've got essentially six mana available. Next turn, draw for turn, draw three from perspective, so I'll have seven cards in hand. So, yeah, I think we actually should be able to get there. Very unlikely for Spirit Dancer to kill us in one turn here. I don't think it's even possible with only three mana. So 
so make some mana. Untap. Cast new perspectives. And start cycling. Have to be careful not to play out our basic forest, otherwise we might draw below 7 cards in hand. And then we can no longer cycle for free. And the fact that we already have Shadow of the Grave and uh, Vizier in hand makes it very unlikely for us to fizzle. Cycle this. Cycle as much as possible before casting Shadow. So we get five cards back. And yeah, my opponent packs it in. So with the Vizier we're getting back and another Shadow of the Grave in hand, it should be impossible for us to fizzle. So yeah, nice turn 4 kill here, that's about as fast as it gets, thanks to a turn 2 Haven into turn 3 Vizier. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Not a great hand, but maybe still keepable. Tusker can find blue mana. And then we've got a lot of ramp into maybe just a big Shark Typhoon, who knows. Alright, we'll get the fetid pools in play so we can keep up sensor. Turn to servants, so could be an Aetherworks Marvel deck. In which case we want to counter it with sensor if possible. I'll take two. And I don't think I cycle migration path, since I kinda wanted to just Maybe cycle a big Shark Typhoon. Alright, Rogue Refiner is probably worth countering. And then I could keep up Crows and Tusker if we don't need to censor. Another one. Yeah, I think I still counter it. Alright, there's a new perspective, so that's great. So, you can play Haven, Enchanting Feathered Pools. So that makes all three colors. If they have Marvel, they don't have enough energy to spin it. Another refiner, all right. So I think I should cycle, probably cycle Typhoon. All right, no untapped lands, unfortunately. Although I could cycle Vizier to maybe get another shot at an untapped land since I can untap Fetid Pools. It's probably worth it because if they next turn play Marvel, and hit an Ulamog, I'm probably just dead. So I should give myself the chance to just win now. Ah, Tusker instead. So, yeah, I guess cycle Tusker, play lands. Doesn't matter too much which one. And then hope they don't marvel into an Ulamog here. Yep, yeah, there's a marvel. Ugin would still be acceptable. But it's Ulamog. And that gets rid of my lands. Yep, that's rough. So I guess we'll cycle Tusker now. But yeah, I don't think there's any way we can come back now.
Typhoon can trump Ulamog. Do we still have a chance somehow? I mean, I still need six mana for perspectives. And I don't have an untapped blue source, so I'm forced to play island, so... Yeah, I think that means we're just dead. Ulamo could also exile my Oracle, which would make it very difficult to combo off. And yeah, I think I caught a glimpse of Thassa's Oracle, so even if we did cast new perspectives, we would not have had a combo piece left in the deck to win. Alright, that's too bad. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. A bit heavy on the tap lands, but we have both ramp interaction and, of course, most importantly, our new perspectives. Facing Breeding Pool and a Thassa's Oracle hardcast. Yeah, we'll play Haven, Enchant, Feathered Pools. And next turn we've got a few options. Ideally we keep Vizier in hand for the combo turn. Emery. Aha, uh -huh, I see. So this must be... the uh, Song of Creation deck. So, I guess keeping up sensor is important. And just play this tapped. So, your Song of Creation, which we will definitely counter. Pact of Negation, of all things. Alright, I guess you got it. So, they pretty much have to win this turn. Although I guess Emery can get back Mox so they can still pay for the pack next turn. And I guess they also get an extra land from Song so they're in the clear. Alright, so point's gonna draw a bunch of cards and they have to cast another Thassa's Oracle with an empty library to win. Now our opponent's drawing a lot of cards. They'll probably have a bunch of lands in hand by now. So they're by no means guaranteed to combo off entirely. They don't have a card like Shadow of the Grave to get all those cards back in their hand. So they have 24 cards remaining. Next turn they're forced to pay for Pacts. And they might also have to discard everything to Song of Creation here. Ah, they have another Emery. So one mana for a redraw, essentially. They're gonna pact their own Emery just to draw two, interesting. So they're definitely going all in now, since they won't be able to pay for double pacts, but they do get to draw two more cards here. So let's see if their play pays off. Witching well. Let them scry too. Alright, the chances of them fizzling now are pretty low. Uh, although they do need another Mox Amber to cast the Thassa Circle. And yeah, I guess my opponent didn't find any more spells here and concedes. Is there a reason why they conceded that I'm not seeing here? 
Yeah, I mean, they would need another Mox Amber. Otherwise, they don't get there, but I'm not sure why they necessarily conceded after bottoming twice. But uh, yeah, I guess I'll take it. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a hand that's missing new perspectives, but has a lot of ramp, so... Yeah, I'll try it, and then if we find some card draw spells, like maybe Boon of the Wishgiver, we could cast those to find our new perspectives as well. Haven and Chance Fetid Pools. And then I might cast Migration Path instead of Cycling Monitor, and then we can maybe Cycle Monitor, cast Shadow to get back Monitor in the same turn. Opponent on what looks like an Energy Combo deck, so another Etherworks Marvel deck. Alright, so if I Cycle Monitor... For 4 mana, I could still potentially draw 1 mana Cycler and cast Shadow. Alright, we found a Boon which we can just cast. So I can Cycle Boon. And then I guess even Cycle Thickets. And then cast a Value Shadow. I guess even Cycle Vizier first. Alright, <laughs> we're kind of going off here in a weird way. Alright, and then discard to hand size, one Triumph can go. Opponent doesn't have enough energy for their Etherworks Marvel shenanigans. And we get a lot of looks at a new perspectives now. And there we go, that should do it. And then... I guess we want to cycle monitor first, but the air opponent sees it riding on the wall. Can draw our entire deck, eventually Thassa's Oracle for the win. Alright, sweet. So we got a revenge against the energy deck, and we also got to show off a pretty cool turn with Shadow of the Grave, getting back a bunch of cards from the graveyard, even outside of our combo turn. So overall, would I recommend New Perspectives as a competitive deck? I would not. It's on average gonna kill around turn 5, whereas I would expect most combo decks in Historic to be able to kill on turn 4. It does have the upside of not relying on any creatures, so opposing creature removal, especially in best of one, is going to be dead. So that's definitely an advantage. But overall it's not the fastest combo deck, and it also relies pretty heavily on finding the new perspectives in time. And of course with only 4 copies, despite all the cycling, we're still not guaranteed to have it each time. So not the most consistent deck, but pretty interesting way to combo off in Historic. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.